Hi, I'm Michael. Welcome to Tamenuri Studio. Today I wanted to show you uh, one of the most uh, discussed and wanted pens in the world. It's of course Mont Blanc 149. But you probably have seen lots of reviews and lots of uh, materials about 149. So I wanted to do it somehow differently. Uh, I will show you more than one. Uh, I will show you some special pens and we'll compare it with uh, other pens from Mont Blanc Meister Stick series and I will compare it, it with direct competitor or pen considered a direct competitor, also German pen uh, Pelican Souverain uh, M1000. This specific pen is uh, one of the recent creations uh, in Mont Blanc uh, Meisterstück series. It's a calligraphy, uh, 149 calligraphy with es expression nib. Uh, so the approach of Mont Blanc to modern flex, as you can see, no, not, a, not an unsuccessful attempt. It flexes quite well, it's not a vintage typical flex, but we will show you in a moment uh, a little bit more uh, of writing. And uh, I will compare it with just usual 149. It's like uh, 90s, I think, or no, it's when I hit, so it's, seven, it's, it's late 70s as far as I remember with uh, double broad. Uh, slightly stubbish double broad and I will show you something special. Uh, why I'm showing you Mont Blanc pants on Urushi channel, on Urushi uh, lacquering pants with Urushi channel and I usually discuss Urushi pants because I'm lacquering uh, three of them right now and three of them, three Mont Blancs, Meisterstick 149. Uh, to lacquer such a pen you need to prepare it and one of the preparation steps is uh, disassembling this pen and I will show it uh, today and uh, mounting it on a on special sticks uh, or holders uh, supports and sometimes modifying the pan. In my case it was uh, a little shave on the lathe, uh, masking the trim and then lacquering of course. So I will show you how to disassemble such a pan and uh, I showed it in a shorter version uh, amongst some other pans in, an, in a previous video but this time I will show you exactly how to do this and what tools you need and uh, how this pen is built. Uh, okay, so I have uh, one of the pens already lacquered with several layers, so I will show it on the, at the end of the, of the video. Uh, okay, so uh, I wanted to compare the size of 149 with some other pens from the series. So this is 149 and here I will, I will try to align it with this grid, okay, and here is 146, a little bit smaller, but much thinner pen, and here is 144, which is smaller than 145 and classic, and it's the only uh, 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 cartridge converter pen here, and discontinued uh, pen from the 50s and it's celluloid uh, 142 which is a tiny pen compared even with the 144 but it's a little bit girthier uh, from 144. Uh, it's very sweet uh, little pen I don't use it a lot because it belongs to my girlfriend so I, I bought it for her and she will show you later how it writes because it's incredible. I wanted to show you this pen because of nib and here you have two nibs, uh, one is 70, almost 70 years old 
one is one year old uh, or even less both are flexible and there is a huge difference in size of those nips and I hope you can see this the difference is incredible this one the small one is number two in Mont Blanc nomenclature and this one is number nine and you will see how they both write because it's it's really worth seeing Okay, so another comparison with direct competition, it's Mont Blanc 149 and Pelican Souverain M1000. Um, both piston pillars, both huge, beautiful nibs and both great writers, but completely different. And to tell you the truth, I wish I could have a pen with Knit, which is as flexible as this one, but with a soft feeling and mm, maybe not responsiveness because it's not so responsive, but the feeling as the one as the M1000 has. So the mixture, the, the fusion of those two nibs, the fusion of those two approaches would be really incredible. I will show you the close up of the nibs. I will add some pictures later. Both are really nice and on the Mont Blanc here you can see the scroll, the flourishes uh, on the nib. So you can easily see that it's a special nib, not the usual uh, Mont Blanc logo, uh, the circle uh, on the nib. Okay, size-wise they are very similar. Uh, Mont Blanc is curvier. Uh, which one is heavier, I don't know. It's, it's uh, not uh, a big problem for me if the pen is a little bit heavier or a little bit lighter. Uh, Lengthwise, they are exactly the same, almost exactly the same. Uncapped, uh, Pelican is slightly longer and with a longer section, which, which is good for me. For me, Mont Blanc 149 has a, a bit, a slightly bit too uh, thick section. I prefer the section on, on Pelican uh, to uh, over the section on Mont Blanc 149, but uh, 146 has perfect section but slightly too short, so I use all of those pens. Both are very good and very popular among Urushi artists. They are very good for uh, Urushi work and uh, it's because they are resin so it's, they, are, they are very easy to prepare and to lacquer and they are quite easy to disassemble. I showed you partial disassemble of uh, Souverain M800 but right now I will show you how to disassemble this pen. Uh, I will not be showing on this one because I'm not planning to, uh, to I'm not planning to lacquer this exact uh, piece. I will show it on the pen which is already prepared. It was disassembled earlier and it is already prepared for a Rushi. As you can see uh, it's it's shaved. Uh, it's matte. Uh, it was shaved on the on the lathe uh, prepared for a Rushi and it was shaved here to make it thinner and to make some room for a Rushi just to after lacquering to make it flush with the ink window here around the uh, this ring at the end and a little bit at the cup. As you can see the only place which is not shaved on the lathe uh, are the area around the rings. It would be very difficult to shave uh, to, to, to thin, it, thin it out here. Uh, we would risk uh, breaking the cup 
uh, and it's not a problem because sometimes with some techniques which give much thicker um, layer of urushi I just cover those two small rings and the middle middle one is much thicker and it it flashes then with urushi and with some techniques which are thin uh, I leave all three rings with those black uh, stripes between them and it's okay. So how to disassemble a mont block? You will need special tools. Unfortunately it's not like with Pelican which can be unscrewed with uh, un disassembled with just a uh, simple flat wrench uh, something like this one here and uh, hence uh, the, in this case you will need uh, some tools. Some tools uh, are easily available and it's a screwdriver and we will begin with the cup and it's you have to find the screw which is inside, you found it and just unscrew it and first part is done. So we have a cup, a thin nail on the cup with the, with the snow cup and the clip. We will not need the clip and the screw for lacquering, but those two parts are ready to be mounted on the, uh, on the holders. Then uh, maybe I will start with the nib. So then the nib. For unscrewing the nib you will need one of two possible tools. So there are two types of nib. Uh, uh, nibs, uh, layout of the nib. Uh, uh, notches on the uh, nib housing and one is symmetrical the other one is not so you will need two different tools this one is quite universal but you can also find something like this so and it's slightly different with the thicker notches but uh, both work well so you unscrew the nib in some cases it's quite difficult at the beginning uh, as you can see it's a two-part section and I already disassembled it before but you will find a lot of sealant here and some sealant at the, uh, at the uh, threads of the housing. I removed the nib earlier and stored it somewhere. Uh, I think it's in another pen. And, uh, but it works exactly the same with the nib in. So as you can see the only thread connecting the nib with the, the barrel is this one here. So, so the sealant, sealant which is around this uh, section uh, here is only f to make it sit more tightly and do not rattle on the pen. I think it's, as I, as I looked at this pen, it's a kind of a Teflon tape or something like that. Okay, so we have another part. This one we will not need unless someone is crazy enough to lacquer the, the feet, but it's a plastic one so it will not work. And the pen is almost disassembled and the only part we will need to uh, remove now it's a piston assembly. Uh, I disassembled this one before so it, uh, it unscrews too easily. But first you have to unscrew uh, the piston. The piston... Uh, piston uh, cup and use a tool with two small notches here to find the notches under this under this cup or finial or blind cup or whatever you call it and unscrew it clockwise so it's not like the pelican which unscrews counterclockwise unscrew it pull it out remove this ring and Keep it somewhere and then un keep unscrewing the piston and keep unscrewing and it's the last part which is gonna be lacquered. So here you have completely disassembled Mont Blanc 149. So all the parts, um, just the nib is not here. The nibs uh, on Mont Blanc's 149 are of two different kinds, so it's an old style, old type and new type nib. This, this housing is the old type nib, so with the collar here. The new one is with the, without the collar and the collar is on the section itself and the nib unit flashes with 
the uh, color on the section and goes deeper. Uh, that's it as far as disassembling uh, 149 is concerned. Next step in my process is mounting this pan on the holders. And here you have two different pans. It's mixed parts of a Mont Blanc 149 and uh, uh, Sailor uh, 1911 large. And this is Mont Blanc part and this is Mont Blanc part. This one here and this one here. I am not lacquering the section in this case, but it's also, of course possible. I'm not lacquering threads. Threads are hidden and covered here and I'm not lacquering uh, the ink window uh, also. Uh, so you can see here parts of two different pens. One is Mont Blanc 149, the other one is Sailor uh, 1911 large and this and this part and this part and this part are Mont Blanc parts. Uh, you probably see the traces of the snow cup. Uh, it will be covered with some special kind of treatment, uh, Rushi treatment and uh, the finial, uh, the knob of the piston, the cup and the barrel. Uh, threads are covered and will not be lacquered. I will show you how it compares because they are on the section and uh, they are part of the section and here you can see uh, maybe here uh, that there are no threads here so this is this part only the ink window is covered with tape uh, this is the cup and as you can see I lacquered the two smaller rings only the big one will be the big thick one in the middle will be visible it will change the looks of the cup very much and this part will be lacquered uh, just plain and something special on the cup. For protecting all the trim on the pen uh, I'm using different types of tape. So this is washi tape and it can, it's a paper tape. It's, the glue is very strong but does not leave any, any traces. Yeah, it's very easy to use because you can just tear pieces off and cut it uh, to the shape you need. Uh, but I'm also using tape which is uh, designed for lacquer, uh, for lacquering uh, cars, motorcycles and stuff like this. I found this tape through my friends who are uh, airbrushing. Uh, they are airbrush artists and they are using this tape for masking the areas they want to be I do want to have a hard cut out of the paint uh, and they are in many different widths. It's from 3 millimeters, uh, 4 millimeters, 5 millimeters, 7, 10 and so on. But even 3 millimeters is too wide in many cases. So you will need, absolutely, you will need a scalpel. So the good scalpel always with fresh changed blade to cut the tape in different directions just to have much thinner stripes of it to use it for masking the parts of the pen is always a must in the studio. I will not show you the full process because it would require uh, using the magnification and so on but you get the idea. That's it for today. Thank you very much. Please leave in the comments below uh, what other pens you would like to see lacquered with Urushi. Uh, I will show you the rest of the process of lacquering this pen and some other Mont Blancs and Pelicans in the future videos. And please subscribe to my channel to motivate me to bring more. And see you later. Bye.